previously on Ace Attorney Investigations, Miles Edgeworth. Miss Wingmers, will you please answer? No! My God, are you kidding me? And now back to Edgeworth noises. Hello! This is Nico B. Back with some more Ace Attorney Investigations, Miles Edgeworth. When you last left off, we goddamn ran to fucking Larry and Aunt Old Bab. We had them in the same time because, you know, they just... They think, ah, these cameos are so fucking great. We should, we should have to just keep bringing them back for every stupid game. You know what? I, I would love, I would love to be in a game where the case was Larry died or something. Oh my god, that'd be my favorite case in the whole fucking game. Could you imagine it? Oh, oh, I would be just shooting. I'd be like shooting confetti off. I'd be like, yes, Larry the confetti fly. Larry is dead. <laughs> Thank God. Or old bag, one of those two. Oh my god, just what a fucking beautiful day that would be <laughs> all right let's see where we left off <sighs> please don't like old back i let larry old backs be gone don't show up anymore in this game our uh mark 14th 29 21 p.m open air stage hello there i've left i've left the mass two investigation of francis and return return to the ball i tell myself <laughs> i suppose my first order of business should be to look into the ball statue <laughs> mr edgeworth <laughs> Ah, me too! <laughs> God of the right. Yes! I love you just keep his hands gripped like that and he's just got this perma smile so he's like yeah. he's just so fucking happy, isn't he? So okay, what's the situation? What the doodle pants is happening? Oh it's great, and is so much fun! Comes you and I are learning valuable life lessons! That's great. In other words, they bad <laughs> that sort of absolutely no progress at all. <laughs> We weren't going off, honest, sir. Are you reading my brain? That was blue text. Didn't you see it? You shouldn't have been able to re hear that. We investigate our hearts out. <laughs> Very well, then. Would you care to update? Give me an update on the inv your investigation. <laughs> um. Oh, oh, oh. We had a really fun time, sir. <laughs> oh my God! Come on. Are you serious? I mean, why? Why is Gumshoe even a cop? Like. How did you get? How did you get this job to begin with? Like, oh my God! Yeah, I will. I will admit they did kind of up the ante on the the police test after I after I uh I graduated from police academy. I knew it. Zero progress. You two suck. You're the worst partners ever. In any case, take a gum shoe. Yes, sir. You have permission to enter the Alabastian Embassy. Is that correct? Yup. As a local detective, I'm helping out with the investigation on both sides, sir. Good, in that case, I can leave these pieces of evidence with you. Take these. <laughs> oh my god, is that lady's undergarment? You belong to the lady under the pink princess, princess's mask. <laughs> oh, sweet, I bet she's super hot under there. Yeah, she's super hot. You should go hit on her. Okay, well, thanks, sir. Ah! <laughs> ah, 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 ah! <laughs> the pink princess, what kind of lady was playing her, sir? The kind that was also playing the role of the pink badger yesterday. Oh, 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 my balls went up inside me. Oh, oh blah. Understood, sir. Double cameo, sir. If I happen to run into her, I'll give them back to her. I mean, which I mean, I'll throw in her face and run. And if I don't, then I guess I'll unload them somewhere. Ew, ew, I'm touching them. He doesn't seem all that enthused to go find her, but I can't blame him. <laughs> Evan says, Evan says lost their value given to Detective Gumshoe. <laughs> Now then, I don't believe I'll be needing this anymore either. Burn it for me! What? Are you really going to throw that autograph away? Yes, because that Steel Samurai was a fake. He was a big fucking phony. It's just Larry coming to ruin my life some more. Steel Samurai's autograph is crushed up into a ball and disposed of. Wait, what? What do you mean by fake? You don't want to know. Now, now then, I believe it's time for a little housekeeping. Unnecessary evidence has been removed. Remaining evidence has been rearranged. Okay, only important things like no, we don't need the, we don't need this picture of a dead guy. We don't need this bloody knife. Definitely, definitely don't need this Yana Grasso's key or the Canopian paper document. All all this can go. Like, yeah, uh, uh, the only thing I need is this bent spear. That's the only thing I need. Not going to go back to the Alabast already, are you? D no, I. <laughs> Well, well, okay, I literally took two steps to the left, and you're already assuming I'm just trying to go back to the... Look at me, I'm barely off, I'm not even off the screen. Why did you assume that? No, I still have things I need to fucking do. Good God. 
Really, game? You could have put it a little further away from <laughs> the door. Yes, hello there. Ah, uh, hello, weird man. Uh, there's a sign here. I'm not I'm not gonna talk to you. I'm gonna look at the sign instead. So that's totally what I want to do. Ah, uh, so you're back now, are you, Mr. Edgeworth? You must be tired here with these. You can eat whatever you like. And these are... Are you kidding me? Why am I asking him? It's been, it's the same thing he's been getting me the past three times. Discount tickets for our cafeteria. They open tomorrow at 10 in the morning. I appreciate the concern. However, these coupons do nothing for me right now. They're nothing to me. Souvenir stage. What function does it serve exactly? Well, normally we use it for a variety of events. It's all to attract that extra bit of attention to Babal. I heard that tonight over in the Alabastian Rose Gardens, uh, Ambassador Al Alba was to give a speech. And you know what? Manny told me I really should give a speech too. Oh yes, I'm sure you'd be a big hit. Mr. Cochin told you that. Yes, he did. Which is why I thought I should give, give a speech of my own. But unfortunately, I wasn't able to. Because of the fire, the Anagrasu started. Exactly. Prima Duck statue. Ambassador Plano, I'd like to ask you a little more about the Prima Duck statues. Oh, I see. Yes! <laughs> well, let me ask you this. Did you know that Al that Alabaster Mabal used to be one country called Godopia? Of course I fucking know that. Who do I see? Do I look like a peasant to you? Yes, I know that much about your history. Well, the Prima Duck statue belonged to the founders of Godopia. At least that's how the story goes. It was bequeathed unto the king of Godopia as a symbol of the country's wealth. So it was meant as a symbol of sovereignty and the right to rule, I take it? Yes, that's right, which is why both countries are so adamant about their claim. We owe the real statue, therefore we owe the right to rule, is the reasoning. Wow, you guys are a bunch of... <laughs> you guys seem to be throwing a hissy fit over nothing, in my opinion, but whatever. It's pretty petty when you think about it, though, I suppose. Yes, <laughs> unbelievably petty. But if Alamos and Mabal were to reestablish relations, shouldn't that put an end to the squabbling over the statue? I have no reason to believe so. The Primanetic statue is even more important now as a key to diplomacy. What if Ambassador Plano knows about what has happened to the very important key to diplomacy? Perhaps I should try showing him this key and see what he has to say about it. This key! Hey, I should show him the freaking key! Was that the key he was talking about? I know, I'll pre present to him samurai dogs! <laughs> Ambassador Plano, please have one of my hot dogs! Well, don't mind if I do. Mm, oh, they are delicious. Oh, well, would you like some more coupons for hot dogs in my own place? No, thank you. I'm already chock full of dogs. Larry dogs. Uh, the statue? You please take a look at this for me. The pre statue sitting in Alabaster right now actually belongs to Babal. So it would appear. I received a call from Miss Von Karma about this earlier. And you will understand why I wish to inspect Babal's Primadex statue immediately. Because the statue currently in your country's possession... Yes, well, I've already inspected it myself. And it definitely is Alabas sta definitely Alabas statue. I know because it's a real statue. And you're, sa you're saying that Babal's is a replica. I'm embarrassed to say it's true even though I know knew that it someday it would be exposed. I received my orders from the leaders of Babal. And I was to negotiate with Ambassador Alba at this event. I was... I was to negotiate with him and fix the results of the evaluation tonight. To say we could not determine which statue was the real one. Why are you telling me this? <laughs> well, because you already figured it out. Our statue is just a go hollow golden shell. <laughs> wow, really? Are you... No. Are you kidding me? Then you would be able to immediately tell which was the real and the fake one, right? <laughs> Hmm, well this one's really fucking heavy and this one seems to be full of air! <laughs> Even if Babal were to lose face, the reunification of the country is what's important. I'm right in thinking that, aren't I? I'm not making a mistake, right? Right? If you don't know yourself, then I won't pretend to know either. I never thought that by betraying... By being betrayed by my own secretary, the real symbol of wealth would be given to me. Isn't it simply ironic? Hmm. Ironadoodle. Master Plano, there's one thing I'd like to ask you about. Yes? Oh, and don't worry, you ain't asking more than just one thing. How about two or three? How about eight? How about eight hundred things? I need more things. In exchange, I'll expect you'll be coming to Baval, yes? 
Stop waving those in my face, you weirdo. <laughs> Thank you, but just but just the one thing is all I require. Manny Cochin, I'd like to ask you about this man who was your secretary. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> sure, I'll tell you what I know. Thank you for cooperation, Ambassador. You know something, don't you, you fishy, you fishy man? He was, well, he was kind of a fucking douche. If I had to put it in one world, he was an able man. If there was ever anything I needed as an ambassador, he was able to get it for me. To think that a man like that had a hand in smuggling ring right under my nose, going completely unnoticed. I wonder about that. I wonder, I wonder if this guy doesn't, wasn't in on it as well. Actually, I suppose because he was an able man, I was in, unable to detect his dirty dealings. Hmm. Sounds like Mr. Cochin had a very sharp mind. Uh, I don't know. I mean, maybe. This guy, I don't know, this guy always seemed fishy to me, but... I don't know. Recently, recently Manny had been, had been really busy. Because since I became the Bob Lee's representative of the Country Unification Council, he's been working tirelessly to cover my work for me. I'm sorry, but what is this Country Unification Council? Oh, uh, well, you see, and tonight's events proceeded without a hitch. Our two countries were to reunify and become one again. Oh. Wow, really? <laughs> oh! Well, shit. <laughs> okay, so that this was quite... Really? This is this is the this is the moment of fucking truth. As long as long as tonight doesn't go out without anyone getting murdered. Oh damn! Somebody died. Oh fuck me. Well, can't can't reunite anymore. <laughs> but I guess without things turned out, that dream won't be realized anytime soon. Mm, I suppose not. Gumshoe, have you done anything, Mr. Atworth? Ah, you uh, you're enjoying yourself way too fucking much. I don't have much else that I enjoy as much as I go to investigation, sir. If I can't actually do anything to help. So, what did you find out? Uh, well, I, I, ah, 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 I take it he has found nothing of any particular use. As fucking usual. All right, fill me in on, fill me in on nothing. Hey, Mr. Edward, I got something really interesting for Ambassador Blotto. I got coupons. God dang doodly. Oh, what is something interesting? This, sir. Oh, I. Th oh my God, I can't believe it's actually. <laughs> I thought for sure it was gonna be fucking coupons. <laughs> Andrew's just gonna be like, what the? Ah! <laughs> Not the fucking coupons. Oh, that's so pretty. I'm so jealous. That's a real treasure there. What is it? A lantern? Why does the flame burn green, Detective? I've got. Oh, wait! Does that mean you have the green lantern? <laughs> that's right, sir. I am a superhero now. So apparently, if you burn the, the special wit. With crisp oil, oil that they only make them of all. It burns this green color, sir. Hmm, green lantern. It's very interesting. So it's a special property of the oil. Ah, uh, I already see how this is gonna play in. But so it's it's like it. Well, what's this is ink though? Oh no no! It says oh there it goes. It's a special wick crisp oil based ink. Yeah. Yes. No. I, I already see that. That's how we're gonna figure out the uh, uh, if the money money or something's gonna be counterfeit, right? We're, I'm gonna burn it and then find out it's green. If it if it burns green, it means it's counterfeit. Ha ha! It's like the um, what was that movie with Leonardo, Leonardo DiCaprio? Um, catch me if you can. Yeah, that that thing. So it's a ploy to force people to visit the balls. Should the to visit the balls should the royal run uh, oil run out? Raw raw raw. He goes flipping his words all over the place. Hey, Gummy, what about these silhouettes? They stuck some cutouts on the outside of the lantern, so I so direct the images. <laughs> oh, silhouettes, huh? They are rather pretty, aren't they? Ooh. <laughs> Wait, what am I doing? <laughs> all right, so we ask him for an update in the investigation. Hey, what's wrong, sir? I'm saying I want you to investigate for me. Do you think you can do that much? You think you can actually do anything? Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh -huh. I mean, yeah, you got it, sir. I can do it. Hey, that's, that's not fair. Why is Gummy getting to do all the, the fun stuff? Hey, uh, uh, well, that's because I'm, I, I'm Mr. Edward's partner. I was his partner before you. You're just the new Maya. You mean nothing to him. I can't believe you took advantage of the confusion and stole my role as assistant. I expect the two of you to get along and work together on, like professionals on this. Get along, you two. Silhouette Lantern. Hey, where are you going? Are you heading back to Alabast? 
Yes, before I do, I suppose I should give you a summary of what's happened. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. I'm not even saying anything. I'm just going blah, 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 blah. I'm sorry, I wasn't paying attention. Oh, I see. I can see clearly now. So there's been a murder in both countries using an object from the other country? That's the gist of it. Laws is just as strict as Alabast. In their inspection of the people and things that enter their country. Meaning that somehow both murder weapons are smuggled into the two countries. That's the only logical conclusion that can be drawn. Perhaps the key to the weapon smuggling is the person who traversed both countries. You mean the fake Yadagrasu? In one way or another, the Yadagrasu is connected. Of this I am sure. That dirty whore is around here somewhere. Now then, where was Yadagrasu first spotted? I believe it's the Rose Garden of the Alabasian side of the embassy. The garden is just on the other side of this boundary. It's where Ambassador Alba was to give a speech tonight. At least that's where I, that's where I heard the Yadagrasu would appear. In that case, I believe it's vital that I investigate the Rose Garden post haste. Take me to the roses. Wait, before you go, take a look at this, Mr. Edworth. Ooh, it's uh, thingamajigger. What? <laughs> what is it? I guess that it's a guitar pick. Oh, oh. Wow, that zoom and in picture of it made it look like huge. That was a shield. I picked it up just now over there. Do you think it do you think it'll be of any use? There is a little water on it. How did the water get get on it? Hmm. Hmm. Oh wait, it's probably just from sweat or something. <laughs> Doesn't look like there's anything it could get wet from around here. Damn! I like that's the first thing he thinks about. I was thinking they have concerts here at this open air stage from time to time, right? Alright, I'll find its owner later. You going in my organizer, because I know your evidence. <laughs> oh yeah, there's one more thing. Mm. Behold! Mr. Sergeant, will you be willing to hold on to this? Oh, is that... Wait, isn't that that perfume that crazy chick wore? What is this? It's Miss Hughes perfume. It's the bottle that woman left behind and that, that I found seven years ago. Ew, it stinks so... <laughs> it stinks even worse now. I thought one day it'd be of some use to track her down. So I kept it safe all this time. Hey, I bet we can get Missile to find it. <laughs> I kept, so, so I kept it safe all this time. Thank you, I'll be honored to, to, to hold on to it for you. I do I, I do actually imagine that Missile will come into play with this, right? There's gotta be some other reason he's here. Okay, bye everybody. Oh, hey, hey look, Kay, it's a ladder. <laughs> I think it's a step ladder. Oh my God, if we do this, I am gonna fangirl so hard. Hmm, a, la a ladder. Yes! <laughs> Yay! Oh, Nico's so happy. Yay! <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, uh, what, what happened? Are you okay, Nick? I don't know. I feel like something horrible has just happened. I found some more Yowie for you! Ah, that's probably what it was. Actually, this is a step ladder. <laughs> the exact same thing. No way, from their structure up, they're totally different. <laughs> but of course, from a thief's perspective, the best kind of ladder is the rope ladder. Sub ladder's too much, it's, it's much too heavy to carry around after all. And from a prosecutor's perspective, any time a ladder is guilty of being dangerous during an earthquake. <laughs> Yay, we did it, yay! <laughs> oh, I'm so happy. Oh, uh, it's the little things, guys. It's the little things. All right, where am I going? Oh, uh, this way. I'm so glad I examined that before I left, though. Get out of my demon way! I'm gonna be returning to the investigation Alabast now, but... I know, I know. I'll go back to the ball and do some more investigating there. Peace out, home dizzle! March 14th, 9.58 p.m. Rose Garden. What are you doing Follow me? Get out of here, gumshoe. I'm sorry, sir. I just wanted to narrate your green text real quick. Bye! Uh, uh, it's gotta be. I see your back, Miles Edgeworth. It's gotta be me, baby. It, oh. <laughs> oh, God, I'm sorry. Ooh, I have something in my throat there. Well, you sounded really masculine there. I know, right? Oh, I would think it's above. Well, I can't really say I expect that much from Struffy and that girl. Yeah, me neither. Investigation into Manny Coach's death hasn't really progressed any. Meaning they just dicked around all day. How many investigation into the Yadagrasu has? Ah, uh, yes, the Yadagrasu. Even now, I've had hard to believe. A person who can freely traverse between the two countries that we are preposterous! It's outrageous and greatest preposterous! Well, that's what, that's what I came here to investigate. I heard that this is where witnesses claim to have seen the, the Yadagrasu. 
and that really weirdly uh, shaped silhouette. <laughs> I still don't like. I, when they show the silhouette, I'm just doing it again. It's just like, it's like, where was his head? It was just like, it was like the lower body, and then this big mound of stuff. Does he have a bird head on? That's correct. Yeah, Master Alpha was to give his speech tonight here in the Alabast. And that's when the Yadagarasu appeared. Yeah, see, well, where's the face? I I don't understand. I, I may have not look at this right. Is that the lower body and that big mound of whatever is supposed to be the head? Damn. And, and I thought I had Sonic the Hedgehog hair. <laughs> or is it like they're crouched and that's the wings? I have no, like, what is that? That is not how a head is supposed to look. It's not supposed to be that wide. The shadow of the mysterious thief appeared and just suddenly fat vanished. After that, there was the fire at the Bababali's embassy that the Autograsu started. Hmm, my finger smells funny. I have not a single feather from the Autograsu shall escape my diligence. Not a single butthole will escape my, my finger. Wait, what? Nothing. Hey, look at this statue. The statue bears a resemblance to the Prima Duck statue. The black says King Prima Duck's in the battlefield. In order to save the queen, King Prima Dux put his life on the line and went to war. So Prima Dux is actually a person of royal blood. I thought he was simply someone imitating a character from an ancient legend. Well, what surprised me that a real person who looked like the Steel Samurai existed. Oh my god, I am fangirling on the inside. I suppose that's the, that, there's that too. Hello, cameras. There's no return, oh, oh, it's a spotlight. There's no return spotlight here. The Autograsso appeared. The audience that was waiting for the speech to start panicked. They were like, where is the head of that thing? I suppose that's when someone must have knocked it over. I'm having a tough time visualizing the mass confusion that took place here. I thought you was my whip to capture the Autograsu. However, there were people in my way, and I was unable to land even a single lash. <laughs> but I did kill a few people in the process. Good for you, Von Karma. So that, this means that some other... <laughs> yes! Some other poor stats were hidden set. <laughs> ow, ow, ow! <laughs> How is it hitting me? I don't understand. Sup, bitches? Oh my god, he had his crazy sunglasses on. Have you finished checking out all the bystanders? <laughs> yes, sir. Where we found 14 counts of pickpocketing, 16 counts of illegal parking, and one person ran a light, sir. <laughs> Good. Now that now that Larry's gone, my MIB actually sounds like this guy. <laughs> sounds like him again. I can I can give him the other Larry voice. Don't tell me you didn't find out anything related to the case. Sir, not a single thing, sir! Well, for now, let's just get, get those law, their lawbreakers down to the precinct. Agent Lang. Well, if it isn't Mr. Prosecutor. I would just like to thank you for your assistance earlier. Make no mistake, it's not like I was trying to help you with what I did. Yes, yes, I, I get it, you Sundari Baka, you. Uh, after I left, did you receive a word, word from Master Alba? No, serious, I wasn't trying to help you or anything, all right? It's not like I like you or anything. God, get on my back, man. Ugh, it's like, you're so like, you and your freaking awesome pink teal coat. God dang it, this blowing locks, what are we doing? I don't know, I'm acting out of fan fiction in some, in some fangirl's head right now. We're, we're gonna wrap up our bodyguard assignment at the end of today. Oddly enough, we received word from HQ to return home on an urgent matter. <laughs> so if I can be so easily called from this case after I've come this far. I've come too far to lose it all. But in the end, it doesn't even matter. I swear that I'll find the truth and drag it out into the screaming light. Screaming into light. You're with me on that, right, Mr. Prosecutor? Sure, whatever. Yo, bro, you were working on Ambassador Alba's bodyguard at the time. So naturally, you witnessed when the Anagrazo appeared, correct? Yeah, I saw the thief, all right, with my own two eyes. By which I mean I saw his weirdly shaped shadow. The autograss was always there lurking in the shadows. Are you sure that wasn't like a bush or something? I still don't see the human being under that. But when the spotlights were turned on for Ambassador Alba's speech, a shadow a shadow appeared. There's some cries of it's the autograss ring now. <laughs> Everybody run! The sec this next second the spotlight went out. And by the time we got the the area lit again, the de the death feet had vanished. Vanished into the night. When we investigated afterwards, we found that the reason the lights went out was because someone had unplugged the extension plug for all the outdoor electronics. Whether it was someone doing it on purpose, or simply a guest who had tripped over it, we don't know yet. But one, th but one thing is for certain. The Yadagrasu was here. 
So you're saying that basically all you saw was that the silhouette. That is, you guys are, he was definitely here. That was definitely a silhouette. Oh my God. Are we, we sure love jumping to conclusions on this task force, don't we? Yes. Objection. All you saw was a fucking shadow. Then it's entirely possible that this shadow belonged to someone else. Ha, good thinking, sis. I just, you, th you just might be right. But we're for the fact that there were no one, there was no one else with that same shape. I don't know. I, 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 get, I swear, you, you, I feel like they'd easily be a bush. Now, among the staff of the audience members, uh, my men have already done a thorough check of everyone, so I know I'm right. Damn, he is some finger. I'm gonna finger his finger. Someone else's shadow? That sounds like a plausible hypothesis. Okay, seriously, can I find some clues? There are roses scattered on the surface of the water, creating a pleasant fragrance. Hmm. Not just they, just for the aesthetics, this pool's water is also used to putting out fires. I see. Oh! The pool stopped filling itself automatically. The fountain spots, spots are set to open until the pool's water reaches a certain level. This water is used to put out fires. I suppose it must be refilled to its normal level. It says that this pool was recently used somehow in this embassy. I guess I'll take some notes about it just in case. <laughs> what? Okay, I, how am I not immediately saying it was, it was used somehow in this embassy? Like, maybe to put out like fucking burning flames that, was, that we were just talking about? It's used to put out fires. And it seems to be even used recently. And there was recently a fire. Hmm. Interesting. I'll have to put this down for later. <laughs> I don't understand how he's not putting the two. Oh, fucking Larry! No, go, go back to how are you belong, Larry? Oh my God! Ah, oh, what the hell? I thought you were coming back. And that, that's why I gave the other guy the Larry voice. How do you surprise me like that, fucking guy? I'm sorry. What do you, what's he even doing in there? Oh, hey, Angie, thanks for reading it back there, dude. Your gratitude alone is enough. <laughs> and, no, actually, no, it isn't. Pay me money. More importantly, Larry, this pool is not for your personal enjoyment. Get the ball sack out of there. I know that, dude. Do you really think that I'm not tapping to sit up around the pool so we're up for fun? Yes. <laughs> Objection, yes. All right, then. Did you, by chance, fall into the pool look, trying, to, trying to hook with some sweet pooty tang? Nice guess, but no dice, dude. So you know my son, right, Edgy? Your son? What? No, tell me some, please tell me you didn't actually bear an offspring, some evil demon of a child. I guess I got lost sight of him when I was here, shook hands with the best. Oh wait, no, he's talking about the samurai, uh, the samurai son, right? Kind of pretty sure he was around here when I last saw him. Ah! <laughs> you even so how can you be so flippant at a time like this? What are you going to do if your son fell into the pool? Oh, he's fucking dead, dude. How old is this child of yours anyway? <laughs> huh? Oh, um, how old, is, how old is he again? <laughs> Larry, this is the first I've heard of a son. Who exactly is the mother? The mother? Oh, that chick, the pink princess. <laughs> 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 the pink. Hold it. Hold it. That is gross, Larry. <laughs> Miss Von Karma. I was a bit confused by this man's words for a bit there. However, I believe what he was looking for is the doll of the Iron Infant. Yeah, because I'm the Sioux Samurai through and through, dude. Okay, good. I was like, I was like, don't tell me that's that's actually a child wrapped in that little thing there, or like a little person. Heart and soul, dude, and the Iron Infant is my cute little son. <laughs> you have given a whole new meaning to the phrase, an astounding fool. Larry, get out of there. We do not see nor hide nor hair of the Iron Infant. Rest assured that we should find him. We'll never tell you. <laughs> now get out of here. Sounds good. In that case, I'll go search over there, dude. Hey, wait. <laughs> Fairly well. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. Where, where is he? <laughs> That's not as if he's, uh, he'll get very far swimming around in that pool. And though he's unrelated to the murders, he sure knows how to cause a lot of trouble. <laughs> oh, thank God. He, at least he's vanished. Vanish into the night! Hmm, a statue of a woman. I wonder if this lady is pouring water. It says that it's a statue of the queen who spoke of love to King Primidux. Hmm, well, Miles Edward, it seems that you are lousy at reading a woman's heart! 
I opened my mouth about a statue, and she said, and she somehow made some, a leap to that. It's only appearing and disappearing shadow of the Yanagrasu. I believe I figured out its true origin. Oh. Oh, so I was fucking right? I expect no less right subordinate. Now let's hear what you know of this subject. What really casts a shadow of the Yanagrasu? Did it, did it, did it, did it, did it, this thing. The suddenly appearing to spring shadow of the Anagrasu is not is it not possible as created by this statue. Are you paying me for a fool, Mayo Sedgwick? This statue bears absolutely no resemblance to this to the shadow of the Anagrasu! You are correct, however, this statue is but one part of the whole picture. What do you mean of only one part? What is the other part of the real form in the shadow gonna get out of it all up? Oh, I can I was like I was like if there was something else on this screen they were trying to say, no, I have to go over here. Okay, I was like, I used this statue. Okay, I was like, what? It's another statue. The other of shadow was made from the shadows of these two statues. Wait, what, what do you mean by that? Right now, spotlights are all over the place. This is because they were moved when the guests were in, in a panic state. However, we were to restore the lights to where they were when the thief appeared. You believe the two of the shadows will create the Atagarasu's shadow? Precisely. Now then, watch as I reveal the true form of the Anagrasu. First, if we set up... Really? I didn't think I'm like a person to begin with, but okay, sure. We set up a spotlight, a cast shadow of King Primus in the battlefield. The shadow of the King's statue would appear on the backdrop of the stage. Likewise, we set up a light on the Queen who spoke of the love to the King Primus. Her son would also appear on the backdrop of the stage. Ah, so it combines the two statues. Ba -ba -ba. It looks nothing like the Anagrasu statue! Mario Citrus, how, how do you explain this grotesque shape? <laughs> Calm down, Francesca! No! The way the lot needs to be shown on the Queen statue is wrong. What do you mean by that? I believe in the whole of the King's shadow needs to be used for this to work. However, in the case of the, the Queen, I don't believe her whole shadow is needed. Rather, the person who created the shadow only used one part of her shadow. Are we really sure that I mean, this wasn't just like an accident? Only one part. Yes, and that is, that one part alone is enough to fill in the rest of the, sh the Yadagrasu shadow. Why did you say that in the first place? You're right. I apologize. Don't hurt me. A part of the queen statue is used to complete the Yadagrasu's shadow. Uh, her hand! Think back to one of the shadow what is missing in our shadow. Five long, thin areas, correct? Now what is that right you of? Ah! That's right, it can only be the shadow of the queen's left hand. Francisca, can we please us the spotlight's position? So that it only shines on the queen's left hand. All right, let's give it a try and see what we get. Put up, put up, up. It's. Okay, I gotta call, I gotta kinda call bullshit on this one. <laughs> I don't think I don't think they with if it was on the hand. I'm pretty sure the tips of the fingers wouldn't like like go off into these pointy claw-looking shapes. How is it? How is the hand doing that? Huh? Yeah, it's exactly like the shadow I saw. Uh, whoops. Yeah, the culprit must have changed the spotlight's positioning positioning beforehand. Then pull the plug after someone saw the culprit. People saw what the culprit wanted them to see. Their pattern, their guess, was to move the spotlights around. Which we assume was also a part of the culprit's plan. All according to their stupid plan. By the time the lights came back on, the Anarasa shadow had vanished. Which means that the shadow was a construct at the very beginning. So you see, the Anarasa never did visit Alabas tonight. The only country that the visit was with all, although it can be assumed that the Anarasa had an accomplice in Alabas. An accomplice, but who? I haven't figured that out yet, but I assume it was the person who set up the shadow, the shadow show. I sense that the biggest clue yet to solving this case is, exi is the existence of this accomplice. Investigation complete. Heal, Edgeworth. Uh, how's the how's the investigation going? Oh, how's the investigation going? Take it, take it bad. If you come to join us in investigating the outer grassy, please say yes. Be my partner, Button. I just want to push your uh, sexy motherfucking face one time. I left the I left the, mur I left the murder. An agent Lang's charge. My, and my only target from the very beginning is the Yanagarasu. So yes. God dang. 
You're so awesome. So, what have you found out? I got a piece of evidence. May I see it? Sure, but you might might regret it. We're here because we were ready to face whatever may, may come. So if you please. The people heard the commotion by bystanders started gathering. And one woman claimed, I'm telling you I'm a... <laughs> I'm telling you I'm a genuine international journalist. <laughs> wow, that was a good impression of her. Thank you. I can also do you guys, too. Hello there, I'm Edgeworth. And I am Akama. Wow, that was amazing. Wow, you're really good at this. Is there anything you can't do? Nope. <laughs> she gave me an interesting picture. <laughs> a journalist? Huh. Why is there goosebumps on my nipples? Well, actually, she's a freelance cameraman or something. <laughs> this is a photo I got from her. Behold. What in the world am I looking at right now? Is that someone run running sideways on the building? Is that is that Neo? The autograph was flying through the air! It is Batman! At times they are changing. It's not just a man. But evidence, even they lie even they lie to us now. <laughs> but, but when was this photo taken? Apparently right after right after the fires. When the first when the fourth and fifth floors were put were put out. It was taken from a nearby building uh, that you can see from the embassy. I see, so this was taken after the fire. Hmm. The blur in this picture took off from the Babylese embassy. Flew over the ba the boundary and headed for the, the embassy of the Alabast. Simply not possible. People are incapable of flight. <laughs> yes, we have we have settled that question in like three other Phoenix Wright games. Is that a fact? I've had the pleasure of dealing with a case involving a flying person. <laughs> and it was fucking stupid. That was the one with the swinging the body across the bridge, right? That was a dumb one. I still say that's fucking horseshit. <laughs> that they managed to do that in the first try, but let's not dwell. Actually, anytime it deals with any flying person, it seems like it's really fucking stupid. <laughs> Will it be stupid this time? Probably. She come to think of it, I come across kids like that as well. <laughs> <laughs> yes, do actually. <laughs> yep, you know what I'm talking about, my karma. <laughs> maybe that. <laughs> maybe that was more often than we think. God damn, I look good today. <laughs> I'm up to the task solving the mystery behind this photograph. Well, the autograph is took off from the Bobbley's embassy, so I should start from there. Prime this guy, I need to return to the mob ball investigation for a bit. All right. And we're off. Fare with you well. I'll continue investigating on this side of the bid. All right, I'm counting on you. Time to switch my partner buttons. <laughs> Welcome back, Mr. Andrew. Now, come on, let's get back to our investigation. Wow, really? Were you just like sitting here waiting for me? Yes, let's. Wee! Hey, look, he's our favorite smiling guy. <laughs> it looks it looks really weird from here. It looks like his like mouth is taking up like half his face. He's like, Ee! March 14th, March 14th, 10:37 p.m. I'll leave MC Secretary's office. Sir, you forgot me. I think after all the running around, we're right back where we started. It would appear that way. Where's Sheena? Sheena. Hi, Mr. Edward. Hello there. It's your favorite person in the world. Hi, ah. Uh, have you found Manny, Manny's killer yet? Terribly sorry, Ambassador Polano, but I have yet to find his killer. It's only been like 10 minutes. I guess his murder really was the work of the Yadagrasu. Let's get one thing straight. It was the work of the fake Yadagrasu! The Yadagrasu is a noble vigilant who is only out to steal the truth. And occasionally, really shiny knickknacks. Miss Faraday, please don't make such a sad face. If there's anything I can do for you, all you have to do is ask, all right? Would you like some more coupons? No! I don't want any more fucking coupons! Mr. Polano. Actually, there's actually there's one thing you can do. We allow us to take another look around. We didn't have enough time to conduct a thorough investigation earlier. Oh, sure, please feel free to investigate to your heart's content. There's a few questions I'd like to ask you personally, Master. If we're bringing a smile back to Miss Faraday's face, then I'll gladly answer anything. Thank you, Mr. Polano. You're a total gentleman. Ah, you don't have to waste such nice words on me, little miss. Hey, Sir Polano. <laughs> Those two got chummy awfully quick. <laughs> you know, it's easy to say we're going to investigate, but where should we begin? You should probably start by comparing the statue of this room before that and after the fire. And then we should look into the matter of the suspicious person you spotted. 
Yeah, when I came to this room, that person was already gone. But I'm willing to bet the person I was chasing is Mr. Cochin's killer. We don't know, know that yet. However, it's hard to believe that person is unrelated. Furthermore, because the key the Yonagrasu stole seven years ago is found here, it signals that perhaps Miss Yu was also somehow involved. I knew it, that woman was almost definitely Mr. Cochin's killer. Yet again, we don't know that. <laughs> There are too many mysteries to be solved in this case. Speaking of the Yadarasu mysteries, I received the most mysterious photo from Detective Bad. Uncle Bad, he's taking part in the investigation too? Yes, he's been chasing after the Yadarasu for all these freaky years. Uncle Bad, he's so badass. I know. Now that I was told that this photo was taken just after the fire. What? This looks kind of like, kind of looks like this person in the look I was chasing. How does, does this mean that I was chasing the fake Yadarasu after all? I don't know the answer to your question, but I don't think people can fly either. I mean, it's probably just the, looks like maybe someone threw the jacket, right? <laughs> like someone tossed the jacket over, maybe out a window or something? Maybe. But this, this could be how that person escaped. Well, we need to investigate a bit more before we can say anything about that. Okay, so let's not dawdle anymore. Pick up our investigation where we left off. Penny investigation, again. So this is the real Prima Duck statue. This. It's really valuable, right? That's what they say. <laughs> See, I don't. This is what doesn't make any sense to me. They, she keeps saying like it's. You just punch me. <laughs> ow! 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 <laughs> but like, is she supposed to be just a thief of the truth or whatever? Why does she give a shit about all this shiny stuff? Hold it! Hold it! Hey, you're not seriously considering the theft of the statue, are you? You're confusing me with your agenda. No way, Mister. I was thinking about anything like that. I was just calculating in my head how much the statue is worth. Huh, sounds mighty suspicious to me. Now then, Ambassador, I'd like to ask you about your movements before the fire broke out. Before the fire? Which fire are you talking about? Which one? There's more than one tonight. Huh? Oh, oh I, I see, I guess I didn't hear about it. You didn't hear about it. We had two fires here at the Bobbley's Embassy tonight. What a bother all of that was. Wait, but the only fire we know about is the one after the Jim Ninja show. You know the one we're standing in right now? Ah, uh, well, the first occurred at the start of the Jammy Ninja show. Luckily, only the fourth and fifth floors of our embassy caught on fire. Luck luckily? That is quite a big area. <laughs> Not wanting to cause a panic among the theater goers, we decided to keep it internal. The fire at the Jammy Ninja show was the second one of the night. Exactly. So fire eyewitness was the, was the second one. Come to think of it, didn't Detective Bad make reference to the first fire? Did he? Oh, when was this photo taken? Barely right after the right after the fires, when the, when the fourth and fifth floors were put out. Oh, so this means that the photo was taken just after the first fire was put out. Hmm. So what was the extent of the damage in the second fire? The second fire was contained to this this floor, the third floor. I think it was leftover embers from the fire on the floor above it that caused it. That's. Where should I put this? A very bad stroke of luck. <laughs> My office on the fifth floor, Manny's office here. And Manny himself. All gone in the blink of an eye. I feel so sorry for you, Mr. Polano. Oops, so look at me going on and on. Now then, what was it you wanted to ask again? We were discussing what your actions and whereabouts for, uh, for today were. And if you happen to know what Mr. Coach's actions and whereabouts were as well. Yes, very well. Let's see, I've been quite busy all day from morning until now. First I woke up, and then I brushed my teeth. After that, I had a roll for breakfast. Hold it! I don't give two shits about it. Fascinating. How about you just skip to the relevant parts for me? <gasps> oh, you like a condensed version? All right, I can do that for you. Tell me! So what do you do after you finish your morning muffin? What did Mr. Gochin do this morning? Well, originally we were supposed to meet and shake hands with the jammin' ninja. But Manny and I wanted to turn uh, turn into a photo op, so we, we're here tidying up his office. Oh, by the way, you guys pointed out Manon Garb was a, was a different one. I, I forgot. He was the... He was somebody else. I've already forgotten, but he, was, he, was, he wasn't the jammin' ninja. Jammin' ninja was the, the guy that he killed, though. Tidying up his office. You helped clean Mr. Coach's office. Why are you not cleaning your own? Oh, I think I forgot to mention that this is my office currently undergoing renovations. Oh. Okay. 
Which is why I built the Bremenuck statue and the Bobbley's knife set are down here. I see. Oh, oh, but the tidying didn't make take much, really. We just burns, burns the vials we no longer need and expired coupons in the fireplace. The cleaning of the fireplace must have been a real pain, pain though, huh? Do you think maybe that's where the fire started? Ha <laughs> about that, I kind of forgot to clean the ashes out. <laughs> I guess I'm up a creek without Manny here to get angry at me. Ambassador like yourself has been on the receiving end of a secretary's anger. You said he fresh with the embers out? Is that the ash that, does that mean, did you just confirm that the fire started there? <laughs> well, he was very good at being very mad. Why, even just this morning he got mad at me. I spent some bobbly zinc onto the back wall when I was burning the files, you see. And he got mad at me saying that I should treat the ink with more respect. Apparently orders go go up at the chain of command around here. Okay. That's about it for what we did this morning, just some cleaning. Don't tell me you had no other work to do, being an ambassador and all. Okay, what'd you do? Now that you tell me what you and Mr. Goshen did this afternoon. Well, Manny and I went down to, together to the theater from Neutralis. We had to be there for the start of the Steve Samurai stage show. After the show started, I went back to my office on the fifth floor alone. So we were together until the start of the Steel Samurai show. A little while after I had after I straightened myself up a bit, I returned to the theater. Because I was to take part in the photo op on stage at the end of the show. Hmm. There was a commemorative photo op at the end. It was a fantastic photo of the three of us. Master Alba, the Steel Samurai, and myself. After the photos, you I went back to my office on the fifth floor. Prepare for my handshake photo up with the German Ninja. He seems to be se seems to be rather overworked for an ambassador. When I got to my office, that's when the first fire broke out and I escaped down the stairs. The office is completely destroyed. But thankfully, no one was hurt. I admit I ran away from the first fire as fast as my legs could carry me. But during the second one, I pitched in and helped the em em embassy put it to put it out. So you didn't see Mr. Coachin again after the fire of Steel Samurai show. Yes, that's right. The next time I saw him. He was lying there, in eternal slumber. I see. Master Polano, I thank you very much for your your help. I'm sorry I couldn't be of more assistance, Mr. Edgeworth. If there's anything else, please don't hesitate to ask, all right? Oh, here in this area was heavily damaged by the fire. Yeah, I guess we should try, hurry up and start examining everything. I won't rest until I've expanded every nook and, and knocked over a chair. Oh, hello there. It's a bottle of bobbly zinc on Mr. Coachman's desk. Looks like there's still a lot of ink left inside. The seal is un unbroken, so the fire probably couldn't get into the bottle to burn up burn up the ink. Hey, Mr. Polano, looks like your precious bubbly zinc is all right after all. <gasps> what? That's, <gasps> that's odd. Ambassador, what do you mean by that? Um, well, it's just that there's something strange about the, the ink. Would you mind elaborating on that statement for me, please? Wonder if you might tell me what you know about the Mr. Coach's bottle of ink. Um, I just thought of it right now, but during the second fire, Manny was worried about his office, so he came rushing back to it. I called out to him, and when I received no reply, I used my spare key to open the door. But when I did, I was greeted by roaring green flames. The flames were so big that I wasn't able to see into the room at all. The fire was green. What was the cause? Could it possibly be that thing we talked about earlier that caused green flames? But that would make no sense at all. Well, wick crystal oil burns green when, it, when it's lit, as you can see by this lantern. Hmm. And bobbly zinc is made from the same oil, which means it also burns green. You know, I too had thought it was mad zinc that had got, got on fire. So that's why I was surprised to find out there was still a bottle of ink left on his desk. If that's if the case of the perplexing green flames, talk about mystery. What exactly was it that had caught on fire in here? Appear on this desk also fell victim to the fire. It doesn't look too damaged. Oh, I think we'll give Riffle. Riffle through. Uh. Riffle. I, restore a bit. Restore a bit. Hmm, I suppose we really should take a look. There we go. Hello. I see you. It's rather unusual shape for a notepad. So this must be, must be another souvenir from somewhere. Somewhere. Over the rainbow, way up high, there is a paper I recognize. It looks just like the shape right here. Shape of this notepad. That's the shape of this note we found. Hey, you're right. What is it? Looks like some straight, 
straight up Monument Valley. <laughs> ah, yes, a notepad is a souvenir from somewhere in your country. We've been collecting them for the purpose of studying them, you see. Yes, I do. You seem to be quite passionate about it. Oh, would you like to see my souvenir collection? I'd love to show it to you. Are you sure they haven't been burnt to a crisp by the fires? <laughs> Mr. Master Blano, I wonder if you might recognize the handwriting on this note. Hmm, this looks like Manny's handwriting. I see, in that case. Oh, did you figure something out? This note was found in Alabast. Specifically, it was found being firmly gripped by the murder of Damas 2. Damas 2? This note? Yes, it was a request from Mr. Cochin for, for Damas 2 to steal the Premium Duck statue. What? Manny tried to steal Alabas Premium Duck statue? We would know for sure if we could run a handwriting analysis. Ambassador, do you have any documents that were handwritten by Mr. Cochin? Yes, I can gather a few and give them to you. I'll have to ask Detective Gumshoe later to run the analysis. I don't know, maybe this guy isn't bad. I, he seems to be too. He's, he's very. He's being very, very helpful. So I, I can't really. It's not like he doesn't seem to be trying to hide anything. I can't believe that Maddie would even think of doing something like this. Do you have any idea as to why he would have requested the theft of the statue? There is one possibility, but mind you, it's just my personal speculation. And you can tell me the what me would be of great help, Ambassador. Job for Damas 2. Blue, you said you might have an idea as to why Mr. Kirchner hired Damas 2. Actually, I fear it may be my fault. As I was telling you earlier, we were to determine which statue was the real one as a part of today's event. Because of the Yadakras and the fire here, that got canceled, didn't it? Haha, <laughs> I am actually relieved the rest of the event has been canceled. For you see Babal's statue, well, it's just a replica. And did Mr. Cochin know about Babal's Prima Duck statue? Of course he knew. That's why he was only one only person I could consult with. I see. So he was trying to get it back. We had to do something once our statue was revealed as a replica. As to be expected, I was very nervous today, as this was this would impact our country's authority. Yes, I understand. Yes, I understand. Well, when I told Manny my concerns, he said, let me handle it, it'll be all right. I'll find a way to make sure you're ambassador of the, re of the reunited Kadopia. The time I thought he was just trying to cheer me up. But when I saw that note, I realized he was serious. Mr. Cochin conducted a lot of business behind your back. I assume he did a lot of all that to ensure that you are the next Kadopian ambassador. But why was he trying so hard, I wonder? He was so much better at getting things done than I ever was or ever or will be. I don't know the answer to what he was trying to what what why well, he was trying so hard yet. But I suspect he had an ulterior motive in mind beyond just simple kindness. <laughs> oh, here you are, Mr. I found you! I found you! <laughs> yes, they fucking found me. Today I'm sure have you collected the information I requested? Have you done anything useful at all this investigation? Yep, got all right here, sir. There you go, okay. Feel free to take a look. It's for you after all. What is all this gummy? It's all the information on this room I got from the embassy and in interval people. Now we know exactly how this room was before and after the fire. Good work, detective. You actually managed to do something. I'm proud of you. <laughs> no, it's nothing, sir. I'm actually getting people to talk. I think you're just an expert at having getting people to ask you to stop talking. Wow, you two brought me so much to my father and Uncle Bad. <laughs> Ah, oh, damn it! Not you ruined another Kravit. What do you mean? It's prosecutor detective, your dynamics just like theirs back in the day. I always think that bad was my gumshoe. Don't you worry, I'm gonna find my own wonderful partner someday. When I do, I'm gonna become a good yadagrasser just like my father, right? Please don't ask me questions in which I have no answers to, okay? However, I can say that it's a truly a wonderful thing to find a partner you can trust. <laughs> I haven't found that person yet, but you know. <laughs> You bet! You bet your biscuits! So? Uh, so what now, Mr. Edgeworth? Well, I'd like to ask you for a favor. Yes? Oh, that gadget, Mr. Thief, is it? The thing you call your secret weapon. Oh, you mean Little Thief? <laughs> You're coming to rely on it, aren't you? Yes, I'm coming to rely on its bullshit OP powers. <laughs> I don't need a crush like that. I'm only asked because I need it for the investigation. For the information detective ga comes to gather in the ambassador's testimony. I'd like you to please recreate this room as it were during the third floor fire. You got it. All right, here we go. Dark skies of evening when no other bird dares take wing. No one alone remains all. <laughs> one alone remains all seeing. Now when it's the true power of the real modern day Robin Hood. Here we go. 
Wow, you only had to push one button to get this room already. Seems that there are other, other things besides what the ambassador mentioned that have changed. <laughs> I like a blonde who is not facing in the least about this. I would be flipping the dicks out and be like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, what's happening? I'm reliving it again! <laughs> it's possible that we might find the escape route the, p the person K saw used as well. <laughs> oh, oh, no, now he is. Oh, what is this? Some sort of light show I was not told about. Oh, well, it appears to be recreation of all the horrible things that ha happened tonight. Oh, look, is that my friend and he's burning alive in front of my eyes. Oh, I'm so glad you kept that in there just for me. Oh. <laughs> The power of the true vigilante is creating the room with the input put it. Really? This sir is uh, that's certainly one interesting device you have there, Miss Faraday. Holy crap. That's some bullshit you have right there. Oh, my belief's about time we return to our investigation. I see burning fire. I fell into a burning ring of fire. I fell down, 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 and then I got punched in the face by a mountain guard. There must have been in that large green flames of Master Plano saw. So it's like these, no wonder he couldn't get in. Hey, by the time you came in this room and the fire already been put out. Yeah, the fire died out by or something by that time. Then this fire in here is only burned from the time the fire started on the third floor. Until the Anagrasu appeared and caused a stir of all, I suppose. Because Mr. Blah was just lucky enough to run into this fire fire as it was burning, huh? Yes, put it that way. It says you were the one first to discover the body. We can assume that no one else entered the room until that time. No one other than the person you were chasing, of course. I knew what that person I saw was definitely up to no good. I mean, that person could even be Mr. Coach's killer. That is very likely to be the case. After all, that person came into this room before you. They must have chosen this room precisely because they knew no one would be in here. Okay, then maybe the brain fire was there. Well, uh, where the green fire was where it was preventing anyone from coming in. But then, what did the person set on fire to make the green flames? Mm, well, whatever it is, that person burned and made a rather sizable fire. This fire screen will. Well, we'll see, see something that burns green, right? It's a bit tinier than these flames, but you you get what I mean. Yes, I do believe that what you were thinking is exactly what these flames are. Why these flames are green? Which fire-related piece of evidence burns the same color as these green? Are you serious? Take this off. thing? <laughs> the obvious, the big obvious green lantern. It's green. It's green flame comes from the wick crystal oil. It's burning. Is this? That wasn't even me trying to figure anything out. That was just like. Like, making sure I, w I had had to fall asleep while playing the game. Yes, that's the fire I was thinking of, too. I love the green gifts off. I think we now establish that this is green. All right, green, 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 green. Green flames were caused by wick crystal oil. Or the one we know that there's only one other thing made from wick crystal oil. Oh, you mean that thing Mr. Plano was mistaken about, right? Yes, precisely. As we found out earlier in our investigation. Um, I, what? I, I don't get it. Can you fill me in, sir? Fine, I suppose. I'll explain it in a way that even you can understand, Gumshoe. This is a thing made from the wick crystal oil that Ambassador was mistaken about. This thing! Probably think it's made from wick crystal oil. Ah, oh, ah, oh, that should burn sick. Oh, flames and lamp, lamp, right? God, is the game just like, is the game getting bored of me? Or are you bored? Am I boring you, game? <laughs> Do you think I'm just gonna be like, taking a nap while this shit is happening? <laughs> Now see, Nico, the this, the this thing burns green, and then this thing we were just talking about five seconds ago also burns green. Good, yeah, so you put in two and two together. That's a good point, Nico. That's, don't you dare patronize me, you little bitch. I am playing you. I'm your owner. You obey me, Nintendo DS. Yes, precisely. I have the green flames in this room. We're not from a bo bottle of bobbly zinc. Because we found the Mr. Coach and you saw his desk, right? I'm thinking it was the coupons or like counterfeit money or something. Yes, however, we know that Mr. Coach was smuggling the ink in massive quantities. What do you suppose he made using all that ink? I believe what he made with that ink is the answer to what gave birth to the green flames. Oh yeah, I'm beginning to feel that, really feel the energy coming from you, Sir Worth. Yeah! Ha, huh. it would appear that I finally found it. The smuggling ring's real goal. Money! And you probably think this is the source of the green flames. Uh, yeah, counterfeit bills. There we go. Yes. Well, we can assume that great, that great of a volume of ink to make. That would be the counterfeit bills that the smuggling ring made and are circulated in Zengfa. Fucking call that shit like three years ago. You're kidding. You're saying that it was Mr. Cochin who made the counterfeit bills? 
I am. I believe you could even go so far as to say that he stole the Lost printing press. And Master Mr. Cochin had permission to freely use the printing press, correct? Oh, I yes, I do remember seeing him use it in the middle of the night. But never did I think he was using it for such a foul deed. Ambassador, because of your secretary's crimes, you will need to be investigated as well. Ah, yes, I suppose. We've caused quite a bit of trouble for your few countries, haven't we? It's my duty to search out for who shielded Mr. Cochin and concealed his crime. For they are the ones who started the fire in order to destroy the evidence. I shall slay them all with my Edgeworth powers. Okay, what is up with this clock here? The grandfather clock was apparently in a different position before the fire. According to staff members, that was flushed against the wall before the fire, sir. Which means that most likely it was moved by someone during the fire. I think it was, it's totally 11 o'clock now, but I don't hear any chiming. Oh, that's odd. It was still chiming right on the dot every hour this morning. Maybe the fire damages internal mechanisms or something. Master Plano, may we take a look inside the clock? Sure, go right on ahead. Danny Gumshoe, if you would could please invest, inspect the insides of this clock. Yes, sir, on that monitor! Mr. Atworth, I found this inside, sir. It looks like a length of wire. So this is what caused the clock to stop chiming. Hmm, what would that have been used for then? What was the long length of wire doing inside the clock in the in the first place? Maybe he used to get out down the window? I mean, that's how the Yadagrasu got away. Uh, why would someone do this to such a valuable clock? It sounds like it wasn't Mr. Mr. Planet that put the wire in there. Perhaps it was Mr. Cochin's killer who did it. Ten of you took part in the initial Baval investigation, correct? Yep, sure did. I also helped put out fire, sir. Well, that first fire took me by surprise. I had a tough time escaping by the fifth, saving the fifth floor. I was gonna die, painful death. First tried the elevator, but I guess someone else had the same idea because it was in use. If I didn't remember to use the stairs at this point, I'd have it burned to a crisp. Hold it, wait, that's odd. We always warn our staff that in case of a fire, it's dangerous to use the elevator. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I know, seriously, I was, I was like, why would you use the elevator, Gumshoe? That's, that's a really bad idea. Maybe someone broke into the, to a fit of panic? Teddy, did you see the other grouses that came into the Bobbleese Embassy at all? I didn't personally. And the other staff members told me they never got a good look at the person either, sir. Hmm, I wonder if you could tell me a bit more about what you discovered, Detective. Tell me! Something important. Second fire broke out around the, around the time the other grouse was spotted in Alabast. That's also when a suspicious person was spotted in Babal, which caused some panic. So no one was able to get a good look at this Yana Grouse that entered the Babal. Yeah, all they saw was a mysterious person wearing a wearing a long coat. Well, that's not enough to make a, make a positive ID, you know? Still is enough to make the the, per, the people who received the calling car panic even more. A person in a long coat. It sounds like the exact same person I saw. The autographs that appeared in Alabas was proven to be just a fabrication, a shadow. In light of that fact, the autographs that appeared in Babal is also suspect. You can't be serious. Not when we're this close to capturing the fake. I mean, Glisso, you. So the Anagrasu appeared, pier caused mass confusion, killed Mr. Coach, and then disappeared. By the way, Detective, why did you not chase after the Anagrasu? I did! Well, well this MC is huge, sir! I got separated from the other staff members, and I was lost. I was like, ah! I was with, and I was lost for a while there. You didn't even memorize the layout of the building you were to guard, Detective. Ah, I'll be sure to do that from now on, sir! Ah! But you know, it was thanks to me being lost that I was able to come to come to Gabe's rescue. Oh, is that a fact? Oh, that's horse shit. You're so full of shit. Yeah, it was it. It was it was when I was lost running around the third floor hallway, sir. When I heard a scream, I headed towards front towards it right away. Oh, and that probably from when I found Mr. Coach's body. Yeah, I thought it sounded like her, so I got really worried and ran as fast as I could. That means you didn't actually save her at all. She was just fine. It was just she had she not had, had her. <laughs> It was nice to come that machine I wasn't able to take me away. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we... Yes, I'm pretty sure we all work at the same fucking place. Well, I, well, I guess they work at... No, I don't know. I can't remember what it... No, he's like a... Agent. What does he work for again? Is he like a cop? I don't remember. Uh, no, yeah, it was FBI or FIB or whatever. For six days... Uh, he covered for me until I got here, Mr. Edgeworth. Oh, I see. So he can be useful once in a blue moon. <laughs> so it's too bad that Agent Sheena I got here before I did. Hmm, I wonder where Agent Sheena was before you found her here. 
I was before I got to this room, I saw her coming out of the room next door. Oh, okay. Hey, did she not mention something about chasing the other grouse herself earlier? Well, she apparently helped out putting out the fire, that first fire, then during the second, during the second fire, I heard she was busy changing the outer grouser, chasing the outer grouser. She's gonna be a very dedicated agent, you will do, do well to learn from her. All right, point at me when you say that, sir. Oh, she's gonna, be, she's gonna be in part of this in some way, isn't she? Everything in this office, there's one thing that bothers me. Perhaps I should ask Master Plano about it. Master Plano, there's something I'd like to ask you about. Yes? About his office, it appears to me to be very similar to the Master Alba's office. Is it gonna be? I think this is it, isn't it? This. She was in the. She said. He said she walked. He walked. She walked out of the room next door. Does that mean that she went through the fireplace? The. I bet the fireplace can also rotate in this room and go to the room next door. So she what? She was probably in here. She was the one that killed the uh, Manny Coach and then went through the fireplace and came out the other side. Maybe. That's that office. It appears to me to be very similar to Master Apple's office. For example, the location of the fireplace and the position of the grandfather clock. That's right, you've also paid a visit to the Alabastian side of the embassy. Our two embassies actually used to be one. Yes, I fucking know that! Even the pamphlet mentioned that! <laughs> Which is why the building is bilaterally symmetrical. Bilaterally symmetrical, doodle! So no matter which room, the location of the fireplace and the likes are exactly the same. Even where the art is located in the same as my room is currently under renovation. We are tired to make Maddie's room look like the ambassador's office. Give me for your handshake photo op with the Jim and Ninja? Yes, that's right. I mean, what a what's a photo like that worth if it's not taken in the ambassador's office, right? Yet another odd expression of a Bobal's obsessively competitive spirit with an alabaster, I take it. Thank you, Ambassador. That piece of information is all I need to connect the dots. Connect what dots? Well, anyway, I'm glad I was able to do be of some help. All right, let's do this. No thing but a chicken wing, baby. All right, so connect the fireplaces. Bilateral, okay, I think I'm gonna do this here. Bilateral symmetry. Go for it! Connect wood! Yeah! The Alabastian and Bob Bobbly sides of the building are symmetrical to each other. And as we know to be a fact, this room's fireplace may also have a secret passage. Secret passageway? In Alabast, the fireplace turned out to be a revolving back wall. Revolving back wall sounds like a something out of a ninja house! Wow, there's a trick like that building to the fireplace, sir? That's so cool! What? This embassy holds that kind of secret? That's a that's a weird secret. There's gonna be a lot of this room you don't know about, my ambassador. I guess it's time to pay the bill for letting Manny do so much work for me. Please, I really want to know about the real Manny and what you know about this room. Be waiting for Mr. Stretcher. Let's get to the bottom of this. Agreed. My first thought it says likely the killer used the revolving fireplace. Now, connect the other thing. Oh, looks like just another fireplace, though, doesn't it? So how do you get it to churn anyway? Oh. How do you get to churn anyway? That was me talking. And all that side, I had to push the X on the fire wall, far wall of the fireplace. Oh, I see an X back there, sir. Let's see what happens when I push it. Hold it! Nice, give me, sir! Ah! <laughs> There's something about this fireplace that lies in the contradiction of the other fact, the facts. Huh, but we found next where you found, thought we, there'd be one, right? We did, but that's not what I was referring to. Something we, is missing from the scene. What does the contradiction mean for us? Oh, spill Bobbly's ink onto the back wall while burning files in fireplace. Lest ashes there. That's what this is. It's gonna be Ambassador Plano's thing, right? Yes! Ambassador Plano, you said that you burned some old files in this fireplace today, correct? Yes, I burned quite a few files this morning, actually. After he did, he forgot to clean up the ash from the fireplace, correct? And that's right, but why are you asking? And why are you making such a scary face? I'm sorry, I admit I am a bit intimidating when I'm serious. Tell me what you did! You killed him, didn't you? In any case, take a look at this fireplace and tell me what you find odd about it. Let's see. Huh? Where did all the ashes go? The ashes that should still be in the fireplace are missing. Where did they go? What's the meaning of this, Mr. Edgeworth? You don't really think that Ambassador Plano is lying, do you? I killed him, he I'm gonna get him! That was no reason for him to lie, and I don't believe his testimony's wrong either. It's a fireplace that's causing a contradiction. Can what? I might wonder if you might update the fire date place data for me. You got it. I'll add in the ashes from the burnt burnt files and sounds like we first figure everything out now, huh? Hmm. Well, it was nothing. All I did was all I did was follow our lease that led us. My sister coming, so you're about to douse us again, right? Oh, you mean that? Well, you, well, it's what Mr. Edwards is known for, you know. 
I really don't need for you to dance around the the name of what round the name of what I'm about to do. Oh, I see. Connected this here with this. That's how this was used. Is he? There we are. The reason as to why the ashes are missing is simple. It's not because someone cleaned the, cleaned them up, right? No, because even if someone did sweep them up, the fireplace is too clean for that. Master Blau said he spilled some Mobley's ink while he was burning the, the files, and yet there's not a trace of the spilled ink on the back of the wall anywhere. Well then, I don't know what, what happened. Well, I'll tell you what happened. The two sides were switched. By using the revolving fireplace wall, the ashes were moved into the neighboring room, which means that this is a clear indication that the water fireplace was used. There we are. Then you mean the person I was chasing? Disappeared from this room through the through here? Yes, I believe the person you were out were in pursuit of is Mr. Cochin's killer. And after committing the murder, escaped through the fireplace. Okay, there we go. Now can I connect this through the Sheena? Why well, have we figure out the killer's escape route? If I have this but this is the only the beginning. Now we have to chase the killer down. To Funky Town! Escape through the revolving thing. You better connect now, I'm gonna be mad. Alright, there we go. Killer used the fireplace in this room to escape into the next next. And it's only logical for us to talk with talk with the person who was in the neighboring room. Well, the person that was in the room next was Ow! Oh, Ow! Oh, is that person Sarah? Ah. Yes, Detective Agent Sheena! Sheena! She's actually an evil demon lord! Heal Edgeworth! It's looking more and more like Machina is the killer, isn't it? There's not enough conclusions yet. We need to go through what we know so far. She came running straight into this room and in the next one and instantly accused you. Furthermore, she claimed that it could only have been you that killed Mr. Cochin. I don't have any proof yet. However, I know sh I know she's hiding something from us. Okay, then why don't we go ask Machina herself? Hold it! No, not yet. There's something I think needs to be done first. Dead up you! Clean my shoes. Sir, is it my turn to say Mr. Outwork? Yes, I have a two-bar two special assignment for you. First, I need you to run a handwriting analysis on Damascus Tomb's note. Okay, I got the lab boys round on that railway. Second, I want you to see if you can fit through the revolving fireplace wall. Right right now, sir? No, next decade, of course now. We need to test our hypothesis first, don't we, you ding-dong doodly? Go on, Gummy, you can do it. I believe in you. I'm too big, sir. All right, I'm gonna do this like a real man. Here we go! Through the fireplace in the back! You don't need to psych yourself up that much for the, for such a simple task, detective. Ah! I got you away! <laughs> That's all really did really did it, Chert! It's, it's so neat, now I wanna try going through there too. There really is a secret passage through here. I had no idea. Huh. It would appear that the ash really was pushed into the other room. Furthermore, the Bobbly's Ink you spill, Ambassador, is there on the back wall. Yep. Okay, here I go, sir. Technically, I'd really, I'd like you to go through under the same conditions as the killer. Uh, there's all that ash and stuff. <laughs> Your point is, now we're on short on time. If you can please hurry on through. Get, get go through the ashes. Now, yes, sir. Ah, oh, it's so gross. Ah, it's got all over me. Ah, ah. Okay, so now we pretty much have the whole picture, right? No, not yet. There remains a few more mysteries to solve. Such as the Anagrasis whereabouts, the other smuggling ring, the other smuggling remembers, the two weapons that made it across the border, the key Miss You stole seven years ago, and a few dozen other things. In fact, we haven't figured out a thing regarding how Miss You is related to these embassies. Stratford. Number of pieces connected in a very complicated way in this case. It's almost enough to make one completely mentally exhausted. Ah, ah. Or make Nico's voice really tired. <laughs> what are you trying to, what are you saying, Mr. Redworth? I think you were the one who said that it's easy if you follow the leads. Huh. Is that supposed to mean be an impression of me, Kay? You sound nothing like me. If it's info, gather, info gathering you need, Gummy, and I can help you with that, then all you have to do is show off your fancy spacey logical de deductions. Show off? Seems like I'm being boastful when I do that. <laughs> it's not over complicated matters, okay, Mr. Edgeworth? We've been so focused like a laser on only, only what seems strange out of, out of place. So I wonder if nothing's clicked and we haven't unlocked anything yet. But if we think things through calmly, the answer should come to us. Come to us! Hey! Sort of thing I say to myself. But when, I, when I'm practicing how to unlock padlocks, you know. I unlock psyche locks with my super my powers. That's something that I hope practice. That I hope practice doesn't make perfect for your sake. Ah, uh, yay! Look, you're back to your street and laced self, self again. We learned nothing today. <laughs> Amateur, we're back, sir. 
Oh, where'd you go? <laughs> what? You told me to go through the wall! Oh yeah, I was just kidding. Well, I actually did it. Ah, right. you're you're funny. Ah, oh, you're all covered in soot now. Now, now. <laughs> yes, I can see that. Good work, detective. Ah, ah, blah, ah, blah. So I can see use fireplace like a door, sir. It's really gross, sir. Are you all right, Gummy? I'm okay. It's just a bit of ash dust. That's all. You know, actually, now think about it. If, if she not did go through it, would she be like covered in that stuff? Wait, wait. Well, she's wearing all black though, right? Oh, maybe that's what maybe that's why <laughs> been ash dust, that's all your jacket is gone completely filthy see the hem has turned black turned black yeah well got quite a bit of umber ink on it sir hmm I see thank you detective you did a fine job I'll even pay the cleaning bill for the trench coat what oh no sir I, I can never it's just my old coat sir it's always dirty this coat used to be beige color remember if, I, if it was coat I actually cared about then I'd get it clean but you know I see, very well. Fuck you then. <laughs> yes, fuck me. <laughs> As you wish. It's because Gummy was able to climb through the fireplace, we know it could be used, right? Yes, but that's not all we learned. We actually learned one other important fact. And that is? I want to explain it to you later. Right now, we need to deal with the handwriting analysis. Take the gumshoe. Yes, sir, I'll be back before you know it, sir. Handwriting analysis. Handwriting analysis of Mr. Coach's handwriting will take a bit of time. Let's go and wait for the ad from Neutralis, along with Asian language Agent Sheena. Sheena, to be continued. Wow, this whole episode was just, just pretty much fact gathering, really. I didn't get to do a single uh, testimony thing. Oh, that's good, because my voice is about to go there, I think. Anyway, like, like for if you enjoyed, subscribe now, become a Peaky Penguin, where they sell pee, where the days are always sunny, and the vids are always funny. Oh, by the way, ch make sure you check out the cool little, fun little puppy t-shirts we got. All the money will go towards helping uh, help us get a new little puppy friend, so. Or you can donate to my PayPal if you want. As always, guys, till next time, stay classy.